So one final question, sort of in the frontline setting, that I'll I'm going to uh, address first to, to Bob, but we're not going to have any extensive debate unless Dr. Thigpen wants to on, <laughs> on intraperitoneal therapy. But you know, what do you think is the role of intraperitoneal therapy in ovarian cancer? And specifically, this very provocative question that you know, uh, BRCA might have some relation, meaning you know, the, the high concentration you can achieve might be particularly active in it because it's platinum and, and somehow related to BRCA status. Any comments? Well, I think the first thing I would say is that I, that I have the discussion about intraperitoneal chemotherapy with all those who have had surgery and with an established diagnosis and talk to them about the level one evidence in multiple randomized trials demonstrating a survival advantage for the combination of intraperitoneal IV chemotherapy. But I always uh, put an asterisk there and that has to do with um, the current state, uh, the current standards in chemotherapy have changed and, and we're always moving the goalposts a little bit because right now I think s several of us would, would use uh, a systemic regimen in absence of that with carboplatin and most of us probably dose dense paclitaxel. We really don't know how this will operate in that scenario. We, don't, we can't tease apart the other variables, it, it, particularly in the most relevant trial GOG-172, which is closest to what we consider standard of care now, but utilizes cisplatin, utilize cisplatin, but also um, a day eight infusion of paclitaxel, which, um, and a higher dose of cisplatin. I think the most important part about that is the possibility that fractionating or offsetting the paclitaxel um, um, in a more dose dense uh, fractionated manner, as in GOG-172, may have been um, a major reason that we saw the advantage in that trial. So I, I do raise that point with patients. I also talk to them about the fact that we do need to aggressively support them, much more so than with standard IV therapy because of the potential additional toxicities if we're utilizing regimens like GOG. 172, and I also tell them that we have a phase three randomized trial that has recently been closed to look at uh, potential alternative methods of uh, delivering IP-IV therapy. Uh, we don't have the answers to those, and that includes the incorporation of carboplatin. Does, is, is the dose-dense paclitaxel regimen equivalent to giving uh, a regimen that in includes IP-IV therapy? So many, many more questions and answers. I have the discussion, and um, it, it's often very, very complex. So you just said, it says the BRCA influence so, that so, at all? So, so, so I, I, I don't have the answer to that question, but I would defer to other experts on the panel. The, no, I mean, I think it's interesting that the response has actually improved in those patients who are BRCA1 and 2 positive. And, uh, you know, it's, it's walking down that path of, if you want to use the, ph the phraseology, personalized medicine. I mean, that's really, for G1 oncology, it's that one step closer. But clearly what we know is, based on a subset analysis, that women who happen to be BRCA1 or 2 positive and get IP chemo, that their outcomes are improved. And I think that's pretty fascinating, but particularly from a clinical perspective, but I don't know if you want to comment on a biological one. Like. Well, you know, what's interesting is we, I think we now appreciate why this tumor is so platinum sensitive, which is has a severe abnormality in DNA repair. That's part of homologous recombination deficiency. And so um, when you treat a tumor with platinum, you are causing uh, DNA breaks and it can't repair them so that cells die. Whether that's going to be uh, better achieved with IP therapy versus um, a effective dose dense or IV regimen is still open for debate. I think it's intriguing. One could think of a time in the future where maybe we would do IP therapy but give a PARP inhibitor for these patients in maintenance or a PARP inhibitor um, IV and sort of split the dose. But all that again is, a, is very experimental at this point. We, we, in our practice, we offer IP therapy to our patients, selective. Um, and, and go through in fairly gory detail some of the toxicities and things that they've had to put up with uh, with IP. Um, and I would, I would say of our optimally to bulk patients, maybe 20, 25% of them are getting IP therapy.